Hi everyone, we're glad to present our paper here. NLP application sometimes needs to be quickly deployed in low resource languages. For example, in the 2010 Haiti earthquake, the Immerse team built a system that classifies social media and text messages to help disaster relief. This paper introduces a human in the loop system that can help in these scenarios. Specifically, our system allows a bilingual speaker to quickly adapt a pre-trained multilingual word embeddings for a classification task. Modern text classification requires large label datasets and pre-trained models. For English, this is not an issue, but for many languages around the world, the amount of data is not enough. Cross-lingual word embeddings can help. They map words from multiple languages to the same vector space so that models trained on high resource languages can predict in low resource languages. While these methods may have impressive word translation accuracy, they may not be tailored for downstream tasks. Also, unlabeled data may be scarce or unreliable in low resource languages, which leads to low quality embeddings. So, how do we refine pre-trained embeddings for low resource NLP? In this paper, we try to bring a bilingual speaker into the loop. Here is an example of English-French embeddings for sentiment analysis. Typically, we see that points tend to be closer to others of the same language. You want translations like disappointing and decevant to be closer, and other pairs like decent and excellent to move farther. What if we could modify the embedding space according to our feedback like this? In our paper, we want to reshape the embedding space and create what we call classification climbs, which are areas in the embedding space that induce similar labels for a task. To achieve this goal, we develop CLIMB, which stands for Classifying Interactively with Multilingual Embeddings. This is a human-in-loop system that refines cross-lingual word embeddings for a classification task. CLIMB has three main components. First, it is impossible to inspect every word embedding, so we ask the user to focus on a small set of keywords and their nearest neighbors in the embedding space. The keywords are selected with gradient-based salience, which is inspired by ideas in interpreting neural networks. Next, we collect user feedback on the similarities between the keyword and their nearest neighbors. Later in the video, we'll show an example usage of the client interface. Finally, we refine embeddings using an adaptive version of the track repel algorithm. Now, let's break the three components into more detail. We can look at how we select keywords given a classification task. First, we can compute the importance of a token in a given example. Here, L is the classification loss of document X with label Y. We can approximate the importance of a token in the document as the norm of the loss gradient with respect to the words embedding. We are interested and the global importance of word type W across many documents. To compute this, we add up the example level salient scores of all occurrences of word type W in the large label data set. We then multiply by the inverse document frequency of W. The IDF term is necessary because this counts stop words with high document frequency. Finally, we choose the words with high salience as our keywords. The number of keywords is a hyperparameter that controls the time length of a climb session. Here's a quick example on how keyword selection works. Suppose that we have these four sentences from a sentiment analysis task, and we want to pick two keywords. Now, we compute local salience for each word in the context of the sentence that it belongs to. Here, words like frustrated, disappointing, and exceptional have high salience, local salience. To compute global salience, we sum up the local salience scores and discount them by inverse document frequency. In this example, we want to pick two keywords. So we pick the two words with high salience, which are disappointing and exceptional. This is the user interface for CLIMB. On top is the keyword chosen by gradient-based salience. On the left, are the English nearest neighbors for awesome. On the right are the nearest neighbors in French for awesome. The user can press on any word on the interface 
to understand its context and the training data set. Now, the user's goal is to annotate similarity between the keyword and its nearest neighbors, or dissimilarity. And the user may choose to skip over any words they don't feel like annotating. The user can also add new words to the interface to indicate similarity, or they can also indicate dissimilarity. After obtaining feedback from the user, we use their annotations to update E, the set of embeddings. Our algorithm adapts attract repel, one of the methods for retrofitting word embeddings. In this equation, we pull positive neighbors P closer to keyword K and push negative neighbors N away from keyword K. Next, we add a regularization term that prevents the embeddings from drifting away from their original positions. The original embeddings contain important semantic information accumulated during pre-training. We do not want to discard this information, so we use this regularization term. Altogether, the cost function consists of the feedback cost and the regularization term. We update the embeddings by minimizing this cost function. This is an example of retrofitting word embeddings. Since there's a positive constraint between disappointing and decevoir, then we are going to pull these two words closer together. Now, the two words are closer together. We evaluate climb on a cross-lingual classification task. Quickly deploying cross-lingual NLP systems is particularly important in global public health emergencies. So our task is to detect whether a document describes a medical emergency. Here is an example positive document in Elocano from our dataset. The document describes prison inmates being transferred to the isolation room due to chickenpox. For our experiments, we use fast text embeddings that are aligned with RCSLS. Our text classifier is a convolutional neural network. We train our classifier only on English documents and test on Ilocano documents. This is the zero-shot setting where there may be no label documents available for the target language. We hired 10 English Ilocano bilingual speakers on Upwork, a freelancing platform. Each user is given a maximum of one hour to provide feedbacks on 50 keywords. The interface shows five nearest neighbors for each keyword. To improve a model, we could also ask users to label additional documents instead of using CLIMB. Therefore, we focus on comparing CLIMB with active learning. We run experiments on the following models. First, the base model is developed with the original embeddings and the original training dataset. The active model improves the base model by augmenting the training set with active learning. Specifically, we label 50 Ilocano documents with the highest model uncertainty and use them as additional training examples. On average, labeling 50 documents takes about the same time as a climb session, so this is a fair comparison. The climb model is our method. It uses embedding refined by climb and the original training dataset. Finally, the A plus C model combines climb and active learning. The combination may be helpful because the two methods focus on different levels of interaction. Specifically, we allocate half of the user interaction time to active learning and the other half to climb. Let's look at the results. The base model starts off with a test accuracy of 54.3%. Using active learning slightly increased accuracy. In comparison, we see greater improvements through climb showing that CLIMB can be more efficient than active learning in low resource settings. Finally, we reach an accuracy of 73.2% by combining active learning and CLIMB. This shows that the two methods are complementary as they provide different signals to our model. In the paper, we repeat the same experiments for Sinhalese, Tigrinia, and Wigger, and we observe similar results. Please see our paper for more information about our interactive systems for refining cross-lingual word embeddings.